heaven in this house tonight. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, I wonder if there's anyone that can put it into practice what's just been said just now. Amen. Come on, I wonder if there's any young people that know how to worship. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise your wonderful name. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. Oh, mighty God, we give you all the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I, I think we could do a little better than that. Come on, come on. God is worthy of your highest praise tonight. Amen. He's worthy to lift your voice. Come on, he's worthy to extend out your hands unto heaven. Come on, Jesus is worthy. Hallelujah. He's here in the house tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, why don't you turn to your neighbor, give him a high five. And say, it is good to see your smiling face on a Friday night. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, it is, it is great to be here once again in Hermiston. And uh, God is doing great things all over. Amen. Everywhere. Everywhere I go, God's doing great things. Amen. Amen. Not because of me. That's, I, I, if, I, if, that, if that was the insinuation you got, I promise you that's not what I was meaning. Amen. I just, I just love to see what God's doing all across everywhere. Amen. God's do, it, come on, if you don't see that God's doing great things, you have your, your hands over your eyes. Amen. It's time to take your hands off your eyes and say, all right, God, I see what you're doing. Amen. You're doing great things in this world in these last days. Uh, Come on, we're in the last days, young people. Amen. Come on, I believe that God saves his best generation of people of God for the very last. Uh, amen. Come on, do, is there a people of God in the house tonight that says, you know what? Uh, come hell or high water, uh, I'm a child of the king. Uh, come on, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at me. Uh, I'm a child of God. Uh, I'm going to praise him uh, to my last breath. Uh, I'm going to give him glory uh, till I can't have any strength anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, I want to give honor to Pastor Bankston here tonight and to all of the ministering brethren, Brother Della Garza. Amen. Brother Borders, it was a pleasure to meet you for the first time tonight. And uh, I also give honor to Brother Carruth. Amen. Evangelist, evangelist friend of mine. And uh, we got to uh, go to dinner last night and just have a good time and fellowship. Amen. Great man of God. And uh, I also see some uh, familiar faces over here. Amen. I got some relatives that came from Kennewick tonight. Amen. It's good to see Carson and Clayton and Alyssa. Amen. Is that correct? Right, Alyssa? I, I know you used to go by Sissy, so I wasn't sure what you go by. Amen. So it's good to see uh, other familiar faces that are here tonight in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, but if you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like to turn in the word of the Lord. Uh, to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and uh, I want to, I don't want to keep you standing, but you know, you're young people, right? You guys can stand all day, right? <laughs> can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We're not going to read for very long, amen, I promise, but John 6, and verse 60. Let's go 65. Jesus says, but there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, oh, never mind, I'm in, am I in the wrong place here? Amen. John 6, amen, I believe it's 66 here. Yeah, oh yeah, 65. Here we go, I, I was reading at 64, my goodness. Amen. 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Verse 66. From that time. Amen. I want to focus on this verse right here. From that time, many. Somebody shout many. Many, many of his disciples. Whose disciples? disciples. Jesus' disciples. Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him but then said Jesus unto the 12 
will ye also go away. Simon Peter answered him. He looks at him likely with tears in his eyes, I would imagine. Looking at his Savior after watching so many other people walk away. And says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. Two verses of scripture and two more books. Amen. Romans 9 and 27. The Bible says, I'm just going to read it quick. Some of you might be really quick to get there, but amen. I'm going to just go ahead and read. Isaiah, or Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. Can anyone count the sand of the sea? Though it be as the number of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. One more verse of scripture in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. The Bible says in Revelation 12 and 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. For a little while, I'm not going to, look, if you ask most people, I would say, they probably say I'm not very long-winded. Amen. There might be someone that says I am long-winded. Amen. But I, I feel this so strongly on my heart tonight to preach what I'm getting ready to preach to you tonight. Amen. I want to preach on this subject tonight, becoming the remnant. Becoming the remnant. Amen. Why don't we put our Bibles down? Why don't we lift both hands to God in this house? Amen. Why don't we just lift our voice to heaven in this place? Mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, why don't we lift it up just a little louder in the house. Come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is in this house tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we magnify you. Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a good hand cup of praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Amen. Well, I want to ask, ask a rhetorical question tonight. What is a remnant? Amen. What is a remnant? The dictionary tells us that a remnant, in a few definitions, just simply means remaining. What is remaining or yet left a few other definitions is that which remains after a part is removed or destroyed or used up amen a residue amen another definition of remnant is what is left of a community after it undergoes a catastrophe amen the Bible talks about remnants 91 times in Scripture. I mean, at least that uses the word remnant. 85 of those times are in Old Testament. Six of those times in the New Testament. And remnant language in the Old Testament a lot of times is in reference to what takes place after God's judgment. Or in other words, Babylonian captivity. God would always save a remnant of the children of Israel. Amen. And Paul speaks about in Romans about a remnant being left of the people of Israel. He uses Elijah as an example. In, a, in Romans 11 and 1, the Bible says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Amen. Amen. 
And uh, it goes on to say that Elijah is making this, he's having a conversation with God. And he tells God, he basically says, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and they've digged down thine altars. And I am a left alone and they seek my life. Amen. But you know what God says to Elijah? He says, I have reserved. Amen. In other, ways, in other, in other words, I have a remnant of people. That I have reserved 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And the Bible says in verse 5, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And so Paul is actually speaking about the nation of Israel here. And, and I'm, not, I'm not here to necessarily talk about the nation of Israel in this uh, way, in this context that Paul references. He's basically saying, look... You know, the, the nation of Israel is blind in part, amen, uh, because many of them rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah. But Paul says, but there's yet a remnant that God has saved of the people of Israel that, that Paul is saying, look, I am one of them. I'm part of the remnant of people that do accept the Messiah as Jesus Christ, uh, amen. But that's not really what I'm going to talk about tonight, but I just want to pr- uh, kind of give that as, a, as an angle of talking about what a remnant is, uh, amen. But tonight I really want to talk about uh, what uh, receiving or getting a spirit or an attitude that I am going to be the remnant. Uh, amen. What does that mean, preacher? What it really means, what I'm really here to talk about tonight uh, is that at the end of the day, Amen. Uh, come on, when life has done its, its best and its worst at you, uh, amen, uh, that you're still left standing saying, I am still a child of God. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter what th- is thrown my way. I am part uh, of the remnant uh, of the people of God uh, that I'm going to stand no matter what happens. Uh, amen. Uh, come on, I wonder if there's anyone in the house that has a made up mind uh, that says it doesn't matter who leaves. Uh, it doesn't matter what friends betray me it doesn't matter come on somebody it doesn't matter if family turns against me I am gonna be in this to the very last day to the very last breath I am making up my mind to become the remnant Come on, I wonder if there's anyone in the house today that believes uh, that I'm going to be here till it ends. Uh, I'm going to be here until my dying breath. Come on, I know we're young people tonight, uh, but can I tell you, you've got to make up your mind. Uh, I'm going to be a part of the remnant. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible says in Matthew 7 and 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many, somebody say many, many there be that will go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few, come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I want to be a part of the few. Come on, I wonder if there's anyone else today that wants to be a part of the few. Come on, that finds it. Come on, I'm going to walk this straight and narrow. But I've made up my mind. I'm, and come on, if it requires me to live my life according to this word of God. Come on, to the very best that I know. Amen, I'm going to be a part of the few. I'm going to be a part of the remnant. Come on, it may not be the mass majority that says it's popular to live for God. But I'm going to live for God anyway. And I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to be a part of the few. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of you can quote this, but the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. I'm going to be a part of the few. Amen. Amen. I'm sure many of you here today have heard this statement that is used in the Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the what? The Marines. Talking about the Marines. Amen. Can I tell you, it's definitely a catchy slogan. And it actually conveys a powerful message. Amen. The message that it conveys is that simply to be a part of the Marines is not something that just anyone can be a part of. It speaks to its audience as being as almost... An elite group. And rightfully so. 
when they have to go through the kind of training that is involved. Uh, and this is not to cross swords with anyone's perspectives, amen. Most of you probably know more about the military, the U.S. military than I do. But I, my perspective is today that although being a part of the Marines is probably incredibly difficult, it's probably even more difficult to be a part of the U.S. Navy SEALs. Amen. I could be 100% wrong. It's just something I read. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. But can I tell you, I just want to give a few different statistics here about the Navy SEALs. Can I tell you, the Navy SEALs are probably one of the most baddest to the bone groups in the military on this planet. Amen. They, they are the kinds of guys that are called on for the biggest missions that the United States is involved in. Amen. And uh, they, were, they were involved in, in catching Osama bin Laden. And, and they were, they've, been, they've been going around probably since the 40s and, and maybe even before that. Uh, because there was another group that was there that kind of turned into the Navy SEALs. But can I tell you that these guys are probably some of the, like I mentioned, phys most physically, but not just physically, but also mentally some of the toughest men on the planet. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about statistics that are involved with this group. Can I tell you the chances of trying and to become a part of the Navy SEALs if you try today? is very, very slim. Here's some of the basic requirements. Basic requirements just to be able to enter into training. Here's some of the basic requirements. You have to be, number one, a U.S. citizen from 17 to 28 years old. Can't be younger, can't be older. You have to be a man. And you also have to have good vision and no color blindness. Uh, you also have to obtain security clearance. Uh, and you have to be able to score well on a very uh, rigorous physical fitness test and a written uh, test. Uh, they're called the ASVAB test, which measures your mental sharpness and ability to learn. And uh, the physical tests that they require you to do, remember this is just the basic one, is that you have to at least be able to have a passing score for tests of, run, or of swimming to 500 yards uh, and also a one and a half mile run. Now some of you be like, oh yeah, well, that's, that's a piece of cake. Now remember, this is just the basic requirements. Amen. Just the basic requirements just to get into the training. Amen. And so, but let's get into, let's get into the numbers. There's other things you've got to go into to, to get there. But can I tell you, the Navy recruits about 40,000 people a year. 40,000 people. Remember that number. 40,000 people. And because of the popularity of once you've joined the Navy, uh, of wanting to become a Navy SEAL, there's, there's nearly half of the 40,000 that want to at least try out for the Navy SEALs. Amen. And so let's just cut it in half. 40,000. What do we got? We got 20,000. 20,000 guys that try and to become a Navy SEAL. And can I tell you, only 6% of the 20,000 actually meet requirements to get into the training. Just the training. And so that's about 1,200 people, if my math is correct. And so out of the recruits whose applications are chosen, the average, let's just say, let's just round it down to 1,000 the thousand men that make it to Navy SEAL training each year, only one out of four actually make it through the training. That brings our number way down. Someone say 250. And some of the reasons why the SEAL training is so difficult is in order to graduate from SEAL training, you must also meet higher physical standards of fitness. That are more challenging, such as you must be able to swim a thousand yards in 20 minutes or less, or run four miles in 31 minutes or less. And there are also standards for your amount of push ups, pull ups, so on and so forth. And it also includes combat diving. You have to be able to do that in land warfare. There's some crazy things that these guys have to go through. They have to demonstrate mastery in weapons use and land navigation and demolitions and cold weather warfare and maritime operations. And so what was the first number that I mentioned about those that joined the Navy? 40,000. Only 250 of the 40,000 actually become a Navy SEAL on average. And that adds to the group of roughly 2,000 
Navy SEALs that are continually in active operation. And this happens every year. Only 250. You know, I didn't do the math, but somebody can maybe do it. That's a pretty low percentage. Amen. And the reason why it's such a low percentage is because they got to go through some tough stuff. Can I tell you, as each obstacle comes ahead of them, it knocks several hundred people out of the arena, so to speak, because they can't pass through the obstacle. Amen. This is what I would call a remnant right here. Amen. But can I tell you today that the Word of God continually contrasts the difference between few and many. We've already talked about it. Can I tell you the majority or the many that we keep talking about or the crowd or, or the mob is never looked at most of the time in Scripture in a favorable manner. you got to be careful to be joining up with the masses. You've got to be careful. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's right. Come on, somebody. Just because you hear about it doesn't mean it's okay. Come on. Just because it might be trendy doesn't mean it's of God. Come on, somebody. Just because there's a lot of people that are doing it doesn't mean that it's okay. Let me just show you a few things in Scripture here today. Amen. Uh, David writes about it in Psalm 26 and 5. He says, I have hated the congregation of evildoers. If you were to look at another version in that scripture, that the Bible actually says, I have hated the mob. I have hated the mob of evildoers uh, and will not sit with the wicked. Can I tell you, here's a few good examples. It was a great multitude of people that who Judas led straight to Jesus. And they came with weapons. Amen. And they, these were the people that ended up bringing him into trial. Can I tell you, it was a great mob of people that demanded release of Barabbas in place of Jesus Christ. It was a great mob of people that threw Paul and Silas into the prison after beating them. Can I tell you, it was a mob that was stirred up by Jews that were angry at Paul and Silas in the very next chapter in the city of Thessalonica that the Bible says in Acts 17 and 5 but the Jews which believed not moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and they gathered a company in other words a lot of people and they set all the city on an uproar and they assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. Amen. Can I tell someone today uh, that time and time and time and time again in Scripture, when you see that there's a lot of people or a mob or many or a multitude, not all the time, there's some multitudes that Jesus preached to, that it was they, they were receiving what God had to tell them. Uh, amen. Uh, but there's a lot of negative connotations uh, to trying to listen to what all the masses are saying. Uh, can I tell you, uh, let me just show you something in Acts 19, another mob here in Acts 19 and 28. Uh, this is a mob that, that hears. Uh, uh, they had just received uh, uh, the word of God from Apostle Paul. Okay, they had received it pretty well, amen, until this one guy named Demetrius uh, decides, you know what, I'm going to stir up some trouble. I don't like what this preacher's saying. That's what this, this guy was saying. He was a black uh, silversmith. And so the Bible says that he stirs them up. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. The whole city, this is what happens when you get involved in the masses and in the mob. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, these were Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. But the, you know what's interesting is, is even though there was great confusion, they all seemed to know where to go at the same time. Because it was a mob mentality. Starts with one person. And then pretty soon, everyone's uh, chanting the same chant. 
Amen. Can I tell you, we're, I'm talking about things that are going on in this hour right now, in this day. There's a lot of chants of this world uh, that are being promulgated and pushed. Uh, oh, come on, all over the place. Uh, you can barely get away from it. Uh, it's in your face. Uh, but can I tell someone today uh, that I'm preaching to some young people that have got to make it up into your mind. Uh, it doesn't matter what the mob says. Uh, it doesn't matter what the masses say. Uh, it doesn't matter what the many say. Uh, it doesn't matter what the multitude says. I'm going to be a part of the few. I'm going to be a part of the remnant. I'm going to be a part of the straight and narrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let me tell you what Jesus says about the last days. Jesus in Matthew 24 and 4, he says, in, or let's just do 24 and 5. He says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Amen. Come on, we've got to make sure, young people, that just because it's popular, the devil likes to use popularity because it's attractive. And he tries to suck in children of God into elements of life that are only going to damn you, your, your soul to hell. But I want to help somebody today know that you don't got to live according to the ways of the multitudes of this world. But you can make up your mind on a Friday night. Come on. You might today, you might not have your mind made up. Come on, I'm preaching it tonight. Some of you may not have your mind made up tonight, but I'm here to preach it into you. You've got to make up your mind. You've got to make up your mind. You've got to make up your heart and say, come on, I might go through some things. I might, go, I might be persecuted. I might be persecuted for what I believe in, but I'm going to be a part of the few. I want to be a part of the remnant. I want to be a part of the ones. Come on. I want to go up with the saints when they call the number. I want to be a part of the number. I want to go all the way. Somebody lift your hands up to God in this house. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. You know what, Matthew 7 and 21, this is Jesus speaking. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know what he says? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You know what he also says in verse 22? He says, many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? In thy name. And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Verse 23. This is kind of a oneness scripture, amen, right here. Jesus says, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Can I tell you today, let me just tell you right now, that there are many, many more people in this world that are willing to say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. They're willing to, 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 to get close to God with their mouth. In fact, the Bible says that there are a people that draw nigh unto me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Amen. Can I tell you that there's a thin line between saying that I'm a Christian, saying that I am living for God, saying and actually being and doing the will of God in your life. Come on. I know what I'm preaching today. I'm preaching to young people that at this period of time in your life, you are going through stuff. Come on, I know. I... I am a young person. I know. Come on, the enemy wants you right where you're at. Can I tell you, if he can get you in your youth, he can mess you up for generations to come. But I just feel in the Holy Ghost tonight, there's someone that needs to make up their mind. In this house tonight. Come on, somebody. In this house on a Friday night, I'm going to become the remnant. Come on. 
Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is speaking to someone tonight. Come on, you've been on the fringes for far too long. Come on, it's time to make up your mind who you're going to live for. Can I tell you, I just want to echo the words that Joshua said. Choose you this day day whom you're gonna serve but as for me in my house as for me in my house we're gonna serve the Lord I wonder if there's any young man oh come on a young lady in the place today that says it doesn't matter if my parents live for God it doesn't matter if my brother or sister backslides it doesn't matter come on somebody if my boss wants to say what they want to say as for me as for me in my house we're going to serve God. Yeah. Oh, somebody lift your voice into heaven in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, we love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can I use the first front two rows here of young men? I want to get you guys up here for a second. Second row, too, please. Amen. You know, let's talk about Gideon and his army for a second. Amen. This is not in any way, shape, or form close to the representation of the size of Gideon's army. But you know what? There were a couple of tests that had to be done in order for God to, to have the glory in the victory of the battle against Midian. So the first test is he says, and I'm going to have, let's see, let's have from you guys over. You guys are going to be the first group, okay? And then you guys, all the way to you are going to be the second group. You guys are the, the last group. Amen. But God tells Gideon, Gideon, tell your people, uh, anyone who is deathly afraid or just scared or fearful of what's going to happen. Send them home. First group, go on home. There they go. Act a little scared, too. <laughs> and then God says, all right, we'll take the whole group. Let's come on this way a little bit. Let's travel to some water. Oh, we'll just go about right here, and there's some water right there. All right? You guys know the story, right? I'm going to have you guys act out the story. <laughs> Amen, this is fun. Amen. But what happens is they go up to water and they're thirsty and there's, there's a few of the men that drink the water a certain way. And then there's a lot of other ones that drink in a nonchalant way. So the nonchalant guys just begin to, you know, drink that water nonchalantly. Just, just kind of act like you're a dog looking up that water right there. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, get on your knees. Come on. I, come on. Drink the water. Drink the water. The other guys, I want you guys when you're drinking the water, just kind of. Be looking around. You know, bring the water up to your... Yeah, hand on your sword. Be ready. So God tells Gideon. He says, all right, you see the guys that aren't prepared, they're not ready? Send them home. And so group two, go home. You guys can't fight in the battle. What do we got? We'll just say this guy's 100 people. This guy's 100 people. And this guy's 100 people right here. 300 men. And I can't remember the exact number of Midianites, but there was a lot. You know what the Bible says is that when Gideon brought them before up on the hill, can I tell you? In fact, let's, let's, just, let's just, you guys stay right there. You guys good? Let's just talk about what they used. The soldiers used a trumpet. And a pitcher and a torch. And the Bible says that when the trumpet was supposed to sound, and they were supposed to shout, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, that they were supposed to break the pitcher. And the light on the inside of the, of the pitcher shines out with the torch. You know what begins to happen? There's a great shout. Because of this, you see that every single enemy in the camp turns, begins to fight each other. I just, I just happen to believe, and I've heard this talked about before, but this is really similar to what's going to happen 
in the last days. Let's read about it. 1 Thessalonians 4. This sounds a lot like what took place with Gideon. You guys doing all right? Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15. Amen. Here's what it says. The Bible says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and what remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For, in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Come on, somebody. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trumpet. Come on, that's trumpet. The trumpet of God. And what happens? The dead in Christ shall rise first. You know what happens? In verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain. You know what that is? That's the remnant. Come on. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Come on. I just can't help but believe that when Gideon was right there and they lifted up a shout unto their enemy. They lifted up a shout. They blew the trumpet. Can I tell you, that's going to happen in this world. One in these last days, there's going to be a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord. Oh, somebody, I wonder if there's anyone here today that's going to shout, amen, in preparation for that great day. I wonder if there's anyone in the house today that wants to become a part of the remnant. Come on. I wonder if there's anyone in the house today that's willing to rehearse for that day, that great day. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus is coming back, and I want to be a part of the remaining ones. Somebody lift your voice into heaven. Come on, I want to bring it all stand across this house. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I want to tell someone here today, as the music comes, God is looking for a people that's going to stick with it through the thick and through the thin. Come on. He, he's looking for a people. It doesn't matter what kind of stuff they go through. It doesn't matter what kind of problems they face. It doesn't matter what kind of worries that come their way. It doesn't matter if the whole family denounces them. It doesn't matter if those civilizations cave in and denounce God. God is looking for a people that will be there at the end standing strong saying I am still here and I am still living for God. God. I wonder if there's anyone here today uh, that would be able to say, uh, oh, come on, uh, if one of your friends backslides, uh, you tell them, look, I'm going to be here when you come back. Why? Because I'm part of the remnant. Come on, I'm going to be here. It doesn't matter who leaves church. It doesn't matter who walks away. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to be a part of the remnant. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, there's no height. There's no depth. Come on, there's no power. There's no principality. Come on, no tribulation. No distress. No persecution. No famine. No nakedness. No peril. No sword. No death. No life. Nor angels nor things present. There's some people in the house that are dealing with some present battles. Come on, you're fighting battles right now in this service tonight. Come on, I know, I know that it, it, it takes a choice to live for God. You can't live off at your parents' coattail all your life. But there's a point in time in every person's life 
And I believe that it's, it, it comes back to us and, and God tries us again and again and again, making sure, all right, you're still with me? You're still on board? You're still, you're still in the ship, young man? You're still in the ship, young woman? You know, and, and so, but there is a point in time in everyone's life where they've got to decide, is this my God or is this just the God of my family? Or the God that my pastor preaches about. Or the God that my Sunday school teacher taught me about. There has got to be a point. Like Brother Della Garza was preaching. Talking about just a few minutes ago. Well your pastor brings you so far to a point where then you have to make the decision. Amen. I wonder if there's anyone here tonight. That's willing to become a part of the remnant. I wonder if there's anyone in the house tonight that's willing to become part of the remaining. Those that are alive and remain. You know what the Bible says? It says a lot of things about salvation. But you know one of the biggest things right here that's going to make sure you're saved? Jesus says, but they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved that's the hardest battle right there is enduring oh come on somebody come on every hand lifted in the house right now come on the Holy Ghost is talking to people right now in this house right now in this place come on young person come on it's time to make up your mind I'm going to be a part of the remaining ones come on I'm going to be a part of the remaining ones Come on, it doesn't matter what the media has to say. It doesn't matter what social media has to say. It doesn't matter what the things of this world have to say. Come on, it doesn't matter what the voices of this world have to say. It doesn't matter what the multitudes of this world have to say. It doesn't matter what the majority has to say. It doesn't matter what the masses has to say. It doesn't matter what the mob has to say. I only care about what Jesus has to say. I only care about the word of the Lord has to say. I only care that I'm a part of the remaining one. Oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, I need help tonight. Come on, why don't we lift up our voice and pray? Jesus. Oh God. I want to tell a story right now. I feel prompted by the Holy Ghost to tell this story. Amen. There was a man that I, my wife and I worked with for a period of time, him and his wife. Amen. They had been in and out of drugs for a period of time in their life. In fact, they went to a church not too far from here for a period of time. Amen. But can I tell you that they were trying so hard to live for God. Trying so hard. We worked with them. Man, they wanted to live for God. But you know what had a hold of them? Drugs. You know what happened over a period of three or four years of us working with this couple? Man, we would get breakthroughs after breakthrough. In fact, the husband got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he decided to get baptized in Jesus' name. We, man, we thought that there were some great things that were going to happen in this family. They had two little kids, son and a daughter. Amen. They were in our Christian school. Amen. They were doing their best to live for God. And you know what? The devil hated it. The devil hates it when you live for God. So what the devil do? Got them both back on drugs. Can I tell you, within six months, maybe even sooner, the husband goes to work, calls his wife that morning, and says, Honey, we need to go back to church and get right with God. In fact, we're going to do it. He he tells us, we're going to do it. We're going to live for God. She says, yeah, let's do it. She gets a call just a couple hours later. They found him dead in a porta potty from an overdose. Come on. It's because you've got to make up your mind. 
Come on, somebody. You can't play with sin for too long. The Bible still says the wages of sin is death. If it doesn't get you on the first try, it may not get you on the second try. And it may not get you on the third try. But eventually, come on somebody, it may be too late. By the time that you finally decide, you know what, I don't know why. I don't know why God did not allow him to, to have a little bit more time to get right with him. But I believe that this was just his last chance. He had done it again. He, he, it, he was, it was fentanyl. Amen. He shot up fentanyl and killed him instantly. Come on, it's not time to mess around in your walk with God. But I wonder today if there's anyone here today, come on, that's willing to just, come on, push it out. Push out the mob. Push out the masses. Push it out. Come on and say, God, I am making up my mind in this house. Come on, before it's too late. Uh, come on, before I don't have another chance. Uh, come on, I am going to make it up right now in this house uh, on a Friday night. Uh, and I'm going to be one of the people that's going to stick with it all the way to the end. Come on, these altars are open tonight. I wonder if you could come around this front tonight. Come on, what, I wonder if there's any young person that's willing to make a commitment. Uh, that I, God, uh, I'm not going to waver any longer. I'm not going to mess around with the world anymore. I'm not going to mess around with the things of this world world has to give me. I'm not going to mess around. Come on, young person with pornography. I'm not going to mess around with the sin of this world. But I want you to help me, God, to be one of the remaining ones. I want to make up my mind that I'm going to be part of the few. I want to make up my mind, God, that you're going to bring me all the way to the end. Come on, somebody. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here right now. Come on, God's touching hearts on this house. Come on, God's touching hearts on this house. Yamba 